Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I welcome you to New Matek in the name of Jesus. Praise God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I was once blind, but now I see. I was lost, but now I'm found. It was grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first believed. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. It is grace that brought me safe this far and grace will lead me home. When we've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun, with no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. This is my story. This is my song. This is your story if we are on the same side of the divide. You see, we were created as sons and daughters of light. Molded in his likeness, created in his image, made to dispel the darkness that was covering the face of the earth, invented for glory and auto invited for fellowship because there was a time when God himself would come down to the garden and have koinonia with man. But someone on four toes came and stole our fortunes in exchange for the bite of the forbidden fruits from the tree of good and evil. He lied to us. He said we would be like the most high. He said we would touch the skies. But all he wanted was to break the ties that gave us automatic access to the holy of holies. You see, but his lies worked. The fruit was eaten. God was disappointed. He terminated our appointment and served us a quick notice from Eden. The very presence of the omnipresent God sent out of the garden covered only with sheepskin and dried fig leaves. That is where we are, how we are, where we are today. We were lost, stranded, surrounded by nothing. Nobody is headed to nowhere until someone, somewhere, at some point did something, even when we're still somehow lost. We, on earth, we were asking, Oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of sin? They in heaven were also asking, Who is worthy? To open the seals to the books of redemption. To restore back man to the legitimacy of intimacy with divinity. Silence. Silence. Loud silence. Because no one was willing to go through the pain, the shame, the torture. Everyone seemed to scream, it is not my portion. But through the silence, the lamb, the lion, the sun decided, I will. I will become a man. I will go down to earth. I will... Go to that cross, I will drink of the bitter cup, not my will, but yours. See, this was hard. It was the father's heart, for he gave her the son from his heart. It was the son's pain, for when he came, he literally prayed, if it be possible, this cup pass me. He died, was buried, resurrected to make available the currency that restored man back to intimacy. The currency of grace, the grace of access, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is the grace of God, but it came down to us through the sacrifice of the God-man Jesus Christ. So, the apostles renamed and redefined this name to capture his name. Henceforth, it was called the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. This grace saves us from disgrace and brings us back to this place where we can confidently stand and express his glory. You must have heard about a grace called favor, but have you heard about a grace called grace? It is a light that brings us out of the darkest darkness, the oil that fills the lamps of our souls, making us burning and shining lights in a world that desperately needs sight. It is a sign checkbook to a broke man. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became broke, that you, through his brokenness, might become rich. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, it shows no bias or partiality. The grace that brings salvation has appeared to all men. That is, the effect of this grace reaches everyone everywhere like the effect of tea, pain and bad governance. 
This grace saves sinners to saints and saints to sons and sons to stars. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, it is not luck. It is not coincidence because there was a cross and there were nails. There was blood and there was water. Someone, Jesus, died to make it happen. And after he died, behold, the veil of the temple was rent into two. The earth quaked and the rocks rent. The veil was torn. The gates unlocked. So we can stand before the throne. No fear, no shock. Not by strength, not by might, but by grace. I step into the light. His grace is the river of mercy that floods the floor. We have been chosen, though we are undeserving of his fellowship. We are not the clean, we are not the pure. His grace is the anchor that makes us sure that God can bring us near. It is the grace that calls us higher to sit at the feet of the one who inspires, to stand in the presence and not fall apart. Grace gave us the access and called us to intimacy. Not as a stranger, I belong in this space, grounded by the power of grace, access given by grace. So we bow as we worship, as we enter the throne room, crying, holy, holy, thou art worthy, there is none like you. Welcome to the presence, welcome back to Eden, the very presence of God. Intimacy deeper than mere touch. A relationship that heals a love so much. Welcome to the realm of total bliss and ecstasy. It feels like heaven. It's actually heaven. You have the access. It's open to all. Because the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, gives us access to the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>